Thank you for joining us for the webinar, Tech on the Trail, Engaging Kids on Hiking Trails Using Technology. This special webinar is an installment of the 10-part California Trails and Greenways webinar series. The California Trails and Greenways webinar series is offered in coordination with California State Parks and the California Trails Conference Foundation with content selected from the California Trails and Greenways 2020 program due to the unfortunate postponement of their conference in April 2020 due to COVID-19. The webinar series is offered free to the trails community thanks to the Get to the next slide. Thanks for the generous support of these supporters that are shown on this slide. We are excited to partner with them and make this our 79th webinar in the American Trails Advancing Trails webinar series. And my name is Candace Gallagher, and I am the Director of Operations and Webinar Coordinator for American Trails. We will save approximately 10 to 15 minutes for Q&A at the end of the webinar, and we welcome you to send your questions at any time during today's presentation. And I am happy to introduce today's webinar presenter, uh, Wendy Gorton, the author of 50 Hikes with Kids series, um, and many more things that she does. But I'm excited to start today's presentation, and now I will hand controls over to Wendy. Awesome, thanks Candice. Hello everyone, I'm gonna go ahead and show my screen and get started. Candice, can you see? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and, there we go. Perfect. Her, yep, perfect. All right. Well, as Candace said, thank you so much for being here, everybody. I'm thrilled. Uh, I know we were all sad to not uh, be able to go to the California Trails Conference, but this is a really great way that we can bring it to you, I hope. Uh, as Candace mentioned, we are going to explore tech on the trails today, engaging kids on hikes, um, on trails, using technology. I am Wendy Gorton. I popped into the chat. If you see, um, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at 50 Hikes with Kids, where I share tips and strategies and fun stuff uh, on engaging kids on hikes. Um, but you can follow me professionally at Wendy Gorton as well. I love adding to my personal learning network, and I hope you do too. Chat, we're going to try to make this as interactive as we can. I know a lot of you are probably doing uh, remote and distance working. You're on a lot of webinars, so I'll try to make this as interactive as possible for you. We actually use in this the question box, and unfortunately you won't get to see each other's replies, but I get to see them and I'll read them out loud, and hopefully that can give us a sense of a community for the next hour with each other. So go ahead and navigate your way to the questions box and tell us your name, city and state that you're in, and what's your relationship to the trail? Do you, are you a hiker? Are you a land manager? Are you an organization like American Trails? Um, are you a parent who hikes? So just tell us what your relationship to the trail is today. Oh, look at all of you coming in. Great, welcome Krista from Minnesota, State Park Naturalist, awesome. Hopefully I can give some tips today for our naturalists in the crowd, how when you go out, maybe you can spice up your interpretation with um, some cool free tools that are out there. Welcome Chris from Charlottesville, trail planner and manager for city parks, woo! I'm in Portland, Oregon today, and um, our Portland city parks have been um, so wonderful during uh, this um, shelter in place for Oregon and Washington. Um, and it's been really wonderful. I have a lot of families asking me, you know, in our neighborhood hikes or if we have a trail right nearby, how can I uh, let my children loose and, and help them, you know, get outside and um, keep them engaged today? So um, it, this is really, I hope, um, applicable to your summer programming and fall programming um, or with your families, but also just going outside or if you are doing cool like ports in California doing their wonderful Rangers Live series, maybe these are some things that you can bring to that as well. Welcome Susan, we've got Allie from Philadelphia from the National Wildlife Refuge, awesome. Hey Troy, Casey, and more naturalists, I love it. Welcome James, our lands manager from Michigan Tech. We've got Bill, Adrian, Awesome, everyone. Arizona, statewide trails plan. Yes, so many great, great, great folks in here today. Hey, Jim, 
Um, oh, I love it. I, I love that you're able to virtually join us, um, even though we can't have the conference. I'll read just a few more out loud, just so you can get a sense of our community in here today. We've got Nevada Outdoor Rec Program. Hey, Lisa. Tara from Austin, park interpreter for Texas State Parks. Yes, and you love leading. It sounds like to me, everybody, we've got a ton of naturalists and leaders and interpreters. So I'll try to put that lens on today as we, we go through some of these. Dave Larson from National Park Service Ranger at Joshua Tree. Woo, that's featured in one of our books. Um, and Joshua Tree has been so supportive um, in our books and uh, vetting and making our scavenger hunt. So great to have you, Dave. Awesome. Rebecca from VA State Parks, avid hiker Stacy. I love it. Denali, Davis, Petra. We got agents. Everything outdoors. Monica from Crystal River National Wildlife Refuge. Yes, environmental educator. Stacy, all of the above. Awesome, guys. We have got a party in here. I love this. Thanks for letting me read this out loud and hear a little bit more. We got docent led hikes with Janet in Auburn. We got MPS trail maintenance with Victoria. This is so wonderful. Thanks everybody. Okay, more, oh, Santa Monica Mountains National Recreation Area, Anna. Awesome, I know y'all helped me out with my book as well. This is so great. Okay, so we're gonna leave that. I'm gonna ask you a few more questions to just pop in there to try to make this as interactive. I wish you could see these answers too because it's a really great community on the call. Perfect. Bob Kingman from Sierra Nevada. Lovely. Okay. I will send this deck to you as well as a list of resources um, after today to stay in touch. But thanks for letting me know that we've got a ton of naturalists and trail planners and hopefully thinking about technology engaging um, your visitors, your hikers, um, and even your family, um, your own family as well. So um, why me? Why am I here? I saw so many wonderful agencies on the call that I've worked with. Um, I'm the author of two books, uh, Oregon and Washington, 50 Hikes with Kids, and uh, 50 Hikes with Kids, California. And I'm just wrapping up um, New England, 50 Hikes with Kids. So um, just finishing that up with all six states. And really, um, we, I wrote this because as a former teacher, you can see here, um, these are my kids in Death Valley National Park with Death Valley Rocks program. Goodness, I don't know how long ago this was, but this is 2006. Um, you know, as a teacher in LAUSD, uh, I realized our outdoor, ed I grew up going to outdoor ed. My family hiked with me since I was in a baby carrier. And then I come to school as a teacher, bright eyed, ready to teach science and really frustrated um, with the availability of science education um, for all of my students. So um, my colleagues and I really did everything we could to find opportunities like this Death Valley Rocks, get funding from our, um, our state councilmen, and then um, bringing our kids out for their very first camping trip. Almost everybody in my class this year, it was their very first time camping, putting up a tent, going to a national park. It was amazing. And so an experience like that led me um, to get my master's degree in learning technologies. I believed that students um, can lead themselves, can learn. When students have power over their learning, their motivation goes through the roof. And that's what I studied. Um, so I went to Pepperdine and my master's was in intrinsic motivation. I wanted to study if we put inquiry into students' hands, and if technology can help increase that intrinsic motivation. A lot of my students were really extrinsically motivated. Um, they wanted grades or you know, wanted to complete things to get you know, stars or stickers. And I knew that learning is so much more powerful that particularly science education. And I found um, in my research that when you have authentic technology, when the technology is in their hands, when in, they can create and share with it, all of those things make kids want to hike, want to identify species on the trail. And of course, for all of you being land managers, they also want to take care of the lands and conserve them. And when they uh, grow up and have their own family, come use and, and conserve the lands as well. Um, so that's my humble beginnings. But um, I then found, um, you know, 10 years later, 12 years later, this is a message I get on Facebook. You know, to this day, now Johan, who is uh, at the University of Oregon, says he speaks so fondly of that trip to Death Valley. So 
as you're leading your trails, whether you're out at the National Wildlife Refuge or Joshua Tree, and you're like, is this really having a difference? I'm so tired. I'm leading my third hike of the day. It's 95 degrees out like it is going to be in SoCal today. Um, and you wonder, is it worth it what I'm doing to interpret for my, you know, these kids on the trail 100% um, to have this, you know, 10 years later, a message like this is so, so true. Today, though, um, I've left the classroom and I'm in teacher education now for my day job. So I help schools um, and districts and states and ministries of education think how can they integrate technology in an authentic way into their classroom. Um, and so no, like no time before is this really important, um, again, though, to do it in an authentic way. And that's what I'm really excited to share about you today is uh, how can we put technology into the hands of kids in a balanced way, um, or from yours as a hike leader, how might you be able to make the trail come alive using regular technology that almost every family might have on them, or that you definitely have on you as you might be leading um, a hike on some of these trails. So now in the chat, just to get a quick sense, how many of you currently do have children le learning from home? Do any of you have families right now or are working from home or learning from home? Just say yes, no in the chat, I can get a quick beat. Leo's got all three, yes, no. We're across with lots of yeses, some no's. 14 year old eighth grader says Adrian, goodness. Two middle schoolers. Flying solo, Lauren. Your mom's teaching from home, Benjamin. It's two kids, four and six, Charles. I'm, I love seeing these preschool classes on Zoom. It's cracking me up. So cute. Awesome, everyone. Um, so hopefully now you're getting a chance to see um, technology in action for kids. Um, and bless all of our teachers out there who are, are finding their way through this. So the next question I want to bring to you, you may have, when you signed up for this webinar, you may have said, I hear from a lot of parents that they want to get outside exactly to get away from technology. Um, and that's totally true. And I definitely say we don't want to bring our kids out and have their noses, you know, in their phone the whole time. But think about you as an adult. When I know for me as an adventurer, um, and that's really why I wrote these books, is I wanted to create little adventurers. I know what I do as an adult adventurer. I plan um, my adventures. I go out and I do them. I dream. And that's what we're going to focus on for our webinar today is helping our kids and empowering them to do all these things to become one day adventurers. Um, and I think of all the ways that I use technology when I plan an adventure. And I think let's put that into our kids' hands and see if that can't keep them engaged make them want to hike more, make them want, you know, intrinsically interested in the species that they're finding as they're hiking with you. Uh, and so really, how many hours of screen time does your kid have right now? Um, I'll ask that in the chat. And if you don't have any kiddos, maybe just think of your own screen time that you have. How often are you, do you have your nose in the screen? Too much, Teresa, I hear you. Three, hour, three hours of screen time right now, Michelle. Janet says 11, we only allow screen time for school at this time. Three hours, too much. I, I'm hearing in the chat, everybody, I know you can't see it, but lots and lots of folks think it's too much. There's a lot going on. Every day, it feels like all day, Christy, 100%. So I hear it. That seems to be the, the overarching thread through here. Too much. 10 to 12, Colleen, I feel you. Um, so I invite you today to think of ways that with balance can you enhance a hike or a trail using technology maybe it replaces some of your screen time right so maybe you think of if there is science or reading time you know in part of your child's day or for your programming you might be if you're offering maybe a live program perhaps that's replacing screen time of you know reading or doing worksheets a lot of what i've done in my own work with technology is taking technology at kind of the lower scale, which is where you're just kind of consuming information, flipping that on its head so that you are researching, you are creating, you are sharing. So that's kind of the continuum of technology that we do in educational technology. And I apply that to the trail. How might, you know, we can all start out with that consumer level with either the things we offer our students or our hikers or what we offer when we are on the trail and then slowly moving your way into a higher order integration of technology where you are really truly transforming learning, something that you couldn't do um, with paper or um, with hands-on materials. But that's my biggest 
you know, seeing everybody sharing how much screen time they have right now, my biggest caveat is balance and finding ways where it naturally fits in and helping hikers and families understand that balance, right? And saying, you know, if you are um, at the refuge and you're about to leave a hike, maybe there's two milestones in your hike where you might pull out a phone or might invite families to pull out a phone to do something. And so I hope these tools that I share with you today, you have them in your pocket, but I do hope you do share that sense of balance with families and to think that, you know, um, there are certain things that you can bring out on the trail that are helpful. Um, and then how do you turn that off to get that beautiful sense of escape and nature that we all more than ever right now desperately need. Thanks everyone for sharing that. Internet's a huge challenge where I work. So actually access, that's interesting, Michelle. They're taking online classes for hours a day. So if you are, that's kind of a, I, I have two prongs in this webinar today. One is for my trail managers and a lot of what I'll share is what when you are out on the trail with um, hikers and um, visitors, things you can do. But I hope all of about, it seems like two thirds of you might have some sort of children at home at, at some point. I encourage you to go out on a neighborhood walk um, or behind your house or in a close nearby woods, city parks, like we have a couple city parks folks with us today. Try these out with your own family. And that can be a really great guinea pig for you. I know my family has been a wonderful guinea pig to see how this works uh, actually on the trail. Uh, and then you can use them when you go back um, and have your parks and lands opened up. Okay, and then I just wanna ask, what kind of technology do you like to use on the trail? So in your programs right now, we have so many folks from all over the country running wonderful interpretive programs. Uh, are there any programs that you currently are using? Uh, either it's an app or does your, like ports in California State Parks, do you already offer some sort of technology related to trails? So throw that in the chat. And again, I'll go through this chat because you all are sharing so much great resources. And in that follow-up email, we'll put some of these cool resources that you share. So drop that in. Yes, Carrie, we're gonna talk about Agents of Discovery. Yay, Aaron uses it too iNaturalist, wonderful Gregory, we're gonna walk into that a little bit. Ryan, perfect, you guys are building my agenda here. Geocaching, we're gonna dive into that a bit. Avenza map, kids like Pokemon Go, so some augmented reality. Leo, thanks for sharing. Merlin, yep, Orlando, we're gonna dive into that a little bit. Strava, totally, Tiffany, we're gonna look at tracking apps where um, folks can start to track how, you know, use math in terms of how long they're going, estimating, more eBird apps. I love it. If any that they love this in, and of course, we'll share this, li this list. I know, sorry, Aaron Wilcher, um, you can't see the chat. You can, I can see it. <laughs> so I'm reading it out loud for you. The way GoToWebinar works is that it's a kind of one-way street. So I'm seeing the beautiful community, um, but unfortunately you can't, but I will try to recreate that for you in our follow-up email. Awesome, everybody. Peak Advisor, we're gonna check at that as well. Peak Visor, yep, we'll look at Skyview, Treat ID apps, Laura. Wonderful, Garmin GPS plant scanning apps. Perfect, everyone. Thank you for dropping that in. Um, we'll share that with the, with the whole group at the end. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna frame this in dreaming, planning, and doing. And that's really what my book series has done is to, we've designed it so that kids can pick it up. For me, I know all of you grew up with something like this in your house, or with your family. Somebody had a, an adult guidebook, but it's not super kiddo friendly, right? Um, and so my goal was to take my own behavior with a guidebook or trail guide, and how do you make it so that a kid wants to hold it so it's rugged? Um, they do cover the whole state, um, you know, so it's a really, really large land area, but my goal was to, you know, have that dream piece to, to develop this sense of kids dreaming about what state park they want to go to, what national wildlife refuge, to start to build that nature acumen of wanting to go somewhere. That's such a key skill in creating young adventurers. Um, so that dream part is about kind of looking at broader maps, understanding what features that kids like, um, right? So every hike has at the end of it, waterfall, cave, historical trail racks, uh, you know, railroad ties, whatever it might be. Um, and then the key piece that some folks even on this call have helped me with is the scavenger hunt piece. Um, and so in each hike, you might have, you know, five items in it that um, are common. And we put the scientific name so they can start to understand that. 
Um, and then some sort of game or question or prompt for each one. And so I encourage, you know, if you, and I know so many of your parks do as well, create your own scavenger hunt. That might be a QR code at your trailhead and it, you know, pulls something up. Um, but the scavenger hunt itself is just such a wonderful way to just give kids something to think of on their hike and um, milestones to hit, start with map reading skills, all that good stuff. Um, but in this book, um, I really wanted to make sure we help kids dream, then plan, and then actually do on the trail. So we're gonna walk through those things today. Um, so let's start with dream. This is me and my dad. Um, and again, he was my biggest adventure mo role model. And hopefully all of you, I mean, I when I was first visiting all the national parks with my dad when I was eight or nine, like I was rangers were everything. And like still to this day, I'm such a geek about rangers and rangers were so, so wonderful in helping create um, these books and other resources as well. So yay rangers and yay role models. That's half of what this is, is them seeing you, using the trail, reading maps, using some of these apps as you're um, on the trail. Um, and we went everywhere, all over the West Coast and now New England, um, kid testing some apps. But I want to leave this with all of you, is kids are so capable. And um, for me as a former teacher and now a teacher educator, for me is about um, helping parents seeing that what their kids are capable of, if they're given the right materials, the space, the room to you know go ahead on their own, the trust in the outdoors. This is a, a, an account that I, I love to follow. I don't think I have their name here, but they're 50, they're super hiking twins. This is them on Mount Whitney and they're five. Like kids are very, very capable um, on the trail. And so a lot of my hikes are, they're five miles and under, a thousand foot elevation gain is the most they go, but, um, but kids are, are rugged and they want to go out and they want to explore um, and they want to, to test boundaries. So don't be afraid um, of letting them go on a longer trail with you or trying some of these um, techniques out. These strategies, I think, help kids go on longer hikes as you are taking them out and getting them on maybe a three or four mile hike for a six or seven year old is, is quite a bit. So by using some of these apps today at certain key moments on the trail can be super helpful. All right. So um, I wanted to start with just our social part when we're dreaming. Half of adventure is involving your kids in this dream process. Um, and so this might be Facebook groups, right? So a lot of you are land managers. So joining the California hiking and backpacking communities um, with your kids, right? Maybe they come scroll through, they look at the pictures. I mean, as an adult, this is how I get my ideas for a backpacking hike I wanna go on. So involve your families in that. And likewise, for your own Facebook group, if you manage your page, um, you know, consider turning it into a group if you don't have one yet, because that group functionality, even as you all can see here on the GoToWebinar today, when it is a one-way street, it's harder to have this community base. So um, for me, being an actual contributing member here and having kids be able to, um, you know, again, depending on their age, they might be going through you through it, but Imagine if right now, this Saturday, you can't go out to your favorite trail, but you can come sit down and be like, hey, they see your behavior of looking at um, you know, a hiking community, sharing your post from your trip um, you know, on the trail for others to see. It helps model for them that they are a hiker in a community and that they want to share information and share things that they do. And that's a really great way to use technology with kids to help them see that community. So one would be finding these gems in your state and all you'd have to do is just um, you know search for your state and hiking and backpacking there even is some that are just for kids right so i'm going to escape from my prezzo really quick and show you here this is my favorite so if you even just search um yay amy just followed me hi amy <laughs> um uh, pacific northwest hiking with kids uh so if you kind of search around as well about um you know, see if there is one for kids just in your neighborhood. And you can join either as your page, if you are a manager of a land or a park or a refuge, you could join as your page, um, or you can convert, or, you know, say you have, I, I just saw Anza Borrego pop up on my, um, they're, they're going live right now. Um, you might wanna also create a group for people who hike in your lands. Um, of course, it takes some moderation, but um, I think it's really worth it to have this community piece and, 
involving your kids in that as well. Of course, moderated with you, right? Especially if they're younger. But again, if you've got these, I know a few of you have some high schoolers in your house, you know, they are just about ready to do this kind of thing themselves and join hiking groups themselves. So again, it's that um, role modeling piece that's so important. Okay, so some Facebook groups. Share in the chat if you'd like, if you have either um, a group or if you just have a page for your organization. And if you have a group, if you have any tips for those that want to try to maybe branch out into group land, you can drop that in. Cool. And yeah, you can even get as granular as you want, right? Backpacking with babies, right? So I encourage you all to spend some time, join them as your page, um, get kids involved into them, and then help your families who come, you know, you can start to tell them, hey, not only follow Anza Borrego, but you know, have your kids follow it too. We post awesome wildflower blooms on it. Um, so it can be a really great way to tell families to stay in touch with you. Uh, and I always encourage families too, to use the messenger feature. That's one of the really great ways that I was able to reach out to so many rangers and get fast immediate responses from all of you um, was through messenger. A lot of your pages are very responsive and really that's how families and kids are used to call. Um, is this more instantaneous uh, access to information. So by utilizing that messenger as an organization and by encouraging your kids to say, hey, after you go out on a hike today, um, give a message over to um, you know, our Facebook messenger and one of our rangers will get back to you. And it's, there's nothing more exciting than a kid sending a message and saying, I saw this weird flower, what is it? Uh, than having a ranger back and be like, oh, I'm so glad you found that. That's really rare. Um, and those kind of moments where that connection between yours is not parents are dragging me to really cool and I want and I want to be there. Um, yeah, so I was just sharing about how you can use Instagram just for using places. I know a lot of you, um, you know, as I was doing research for the book, in many high population places, we often are telling folks, please don't geotag, uh, you know, this this Joshua Tree campsite one more time, you know, but um, so I do encourage, you know, and this can be great for you too, as well on your lands to use this to find different places and to say, yeah, yeah, we know Jumbo Rocks is amazing, but how about you move this around? And this is just under discovery on the app. And really you're just looking at user generated photos. I love to do this to see what's going on because it's recent, right? So I can, I often use this to just be like, are people out there? Is it snowing in Joshua Tree right now? Um, so I love using this for an up to minute kind of base of what's going on, what are people posting uh, in certain regions? And so it can help as well, um, encourage folks to dream and find hikes that maybe are less found on your lands to help uh, share the space. We're going to talk again about Instagram as a creation tool um, a little bit later, but right now we're just thinking about helping kids and families dream about hiking and places they want to go and features they want to explore. I also talked before I think I went down was um, Hike It Baby. So their trail finder website is really, really great. In addition to, of course, joining it to um, if you have kiddos, it might be, and you also work for as a naturalist, you might want to join to um, get involved with other parents and families who love hiking in your neighborhood. I think there's a chapter in almost every large city in the U.S. Um, and they can be a great way to promote your interpretive programs. They're really great for partnering. Um, so let's say you do have um, a great, you know, fall lineup coming up after summer. You might want to just reach out on their website and say, um, would you, you want to host a hike a baby hike with us we'd love to have you um, can be a really great way to get your interpretation out there um, and then this trail finder tool itself let your families know how to do this with their kids and drag along the map and say where do you want to go again put that power into kids hands for deciding as many things as they can about the adventure all right, so any questions about dreaming, um, just looking at Facebook, this is just looking at communities, leveraging those to start dreaming about what hikes that you want. Oh, I turned off my cam, but I'll turn it, I don't wanna break it, maybe I'll break it. I am about to demo some stuff on a phone, so I'm back, but I'll turn it off if it goes, if it goes rogue again. Cool, 
Thanks, guys. All right, let's talk about planning now. So you've dreamed with your families, you've helped them when they come to your trails or lands. Think about, you know, what's possible when they hike with you. Of course, we have all trails, and I think all of you being in the trails industry probably are pretty familiar, but I want to encourage you to help your families when they're done hiking on a trail at your, um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my all trails right now. Um, so I want, I think encouraging families, maybe it is, you know, when you go to a hotel and you see, leave us a trip advisor review, you know, um, for me, working with kids and families to say, you know, you find out, do you want to go on this trail? So step one might be finding it in a book or um, an adult guidebook, or you read a blog about it. Step two, maybe you do go to Instagram and, you know, see what's going on around there. Step three, then again, as a parent, resist the urge to lead all of this. Or again, as a um, interpreter or naturalist, resist that urge to lead everything. So, right? But for a kid to be able to put in, I'll just put in Joshua Tree since we've been talking about that. I think we all know how to use this. But again, now I want you to put your kid lens on and let them get in the driver's seat if they're younger you can click and drive and they can tell you where to go, but teach them things like, let's click and look for kid friendly. We can say, let's, um, you know, let's move around here. Let's put in, how long do you like to hike, right? So if they pop open the map, again, this can be on the app or um, on here, but talk about it, right? And so even when you're going on your hikes or leading a naturalist event at your, um, at your organization, talking to them be like we're gonna go you know three quarters of a mile today how does that feel um liz thomas she's a really great speed hiker for she sped hiked the appalachian trail she does really great like 50 mile urban walks i asked her you know how do you manage that and um she talks about gauges on your body um you know thinking of like a tank being full half full so talking to kids about when you're about to go on a hike about that can be helpful so they start to get that inner gauge and technology like this helps give them the language and the barometer to think about that right again if you just go ahead and pick and say i want to do a seven mile hike this weekend and you're going with me kids you know it's going to be a different experience versus saying like well remember we went um we went to anza borrego you know a few months ago we did about two months two miles so it was hot you got a little bit tired what do you think do you want to go more than that do you want to go less than that so letting them choose um, and saying, all right, well, I want something that's three miles, and then letting them go through this, right? Helping your kids understand elevation, um, understand the profile, understand what that means to their body. Technology can help them with that. And so uh, not only can they do this before they come to your, um, you know, visitor center, you know, and having this as a possible resource uh, to say, well, why don't you take a look? And then encouraging the reviews, especially a lot of you have some fourth, fifth, sixth graders. They are more than willing to um, start writing about something that matters. A lot of um, families tell me like, oh, my, you know, my kid doesn't love to write. Um, and it's often because nobody's reading it, right? There's not really a big motivation to write something that only your teacher is going to read. So by using technology to say like, hey, we could co-write. Um, oh, it's so sad to see everything closed, isn't it, everybody? Um, but let's say we did do split rock loop. Um, when we're done with it, encourage, you know, of course, during the plan phase, right, we can um, save it here. You can have your own kids trail. Maybe they have an ongoing trail log that they want to do. Um, again, it's that ownership piece. Um, and it might be crazy dream stuff. Like if you live in California, but you want to go to Pennsylvania one day and check out, um, you know, amazing gorge or waterfalls, um, you know, let them have a dream list so that when you plan your summer vacation next year, you can kind of come back through here and be like, oh, what did you say that you wanted to go see? Uh, it's going to be a really great way to just start that planning skill in your kids. Uh, whether you're they're your visitors or they are your um, your own kids. Cool. We'll talk a little bit about leaving our um, leaving our trail reports afterwards. I wonder if in the chat, if you're, you know, it's nice that beyond all trails, um, you know, every, some states have their own, right? Like Washington Trails Association um, has their own trip report, which is really wonderful. Maine Trail Finder, New Hampshire. Um, and Vermont has trailfinder.info. 
Um, so if your, and maybe even your state park system has its own, um, whatever it might be, if you have a favorite trail finding app or website, drop that in and we can share that with everybody. I know, I, we have a split rock, even in, on Mount Hood, there's a split rock. There's, <laughs> I wonder, that, that could be a fun research project too for your kids and, and having that inquiry, right? And like even just doing this with your families in this planning phase, so many questions pop up and that's really what, whether you're on the trail, that inquiry piece, a lot of parents are nervous about saying, what questions do you have, right? That's the biggest prompt any naturalist or family member can say, um, and not being afraid of, I don't know, right? I know as a naturalist, you know, you know, I've led hikes before too, and I, there's so many species I don't know, but I try to model that, um, you know, that inquiry mindset, that growth mindset, that I, like, let's find it out. I know the places we could find this out. So, you know, even asking them after they scroll around and be like, what questions do you have about this? And it, give them wait time and, you know, two minutes or so, they're gonna start asking you, like, where did this dam come from? Where did, why is that water come from here? All these questions might come up. So even in this plan phase, you might want to start like a family doc, like a Google doc, or um, even in more of like a, you know, I have a nature journal and more like 2D things, but maybe you want to just start this journal where you are documenting wonderings and findings and, um, you know, as a family together, as you're kind of asking these questions and using technology in that way. Take a picture and search on Google helps you identify. Thanks, Ryan, for sharing. Totally, hikingproject.com is really great. I love this. Thanks, everyone. Colorado Trails, Julia. Oh, I can't wait to put together all these resources and send out to all of you. I'm so sorry you can't see all these amazing um, resources. Avenza for sure, Ryan. Cool. Um, so yeah, when you are writing the review, again, encouraging kiddos to do that. Maybe you even do it, if you are a naturalist at your trails, um, as some of you are, Maybe you do kind of gather around. Um, and I do this whether or not I use an app. I do ask kids on a hike, you know, to rate it afterwards and say, how was that? And then we talk about, well, what makes the good hike? What doesn't make a good hike? And you can do this like right here on your phone. And maybe again, you're the driver, right? It's your account and you're doing it. But for them to give you keywords, right? So maybe you say, all right, we hiked. It's, you know, April 23rd. Perfect. Um, how many stars? Four, five, why, right? Again, you're building this adventure acumen in them for trying to understand why they like something, why they don't, right? And even talk to them if they want to say one, maybe they say one star and you're like, why? Tell us why. Like that, uh, the community is going to see this one star. We have to back it up with data. Why do you think it was one? Um, so it's just a really good critical thinking exercise. Again, that motivation is there for them to say, um, if someone's going to see this, right, this is great. And so when kids are writing it on their own, like I might have my nephews write this and I'm, you know, have them spell check and be like, all right, one last check. Does it look like it's ready for the public to read? Um, then yes or no. Oh, Michigan Trail Maps. Thanks, James. Cool. So yeah, encouraging families um, and kids to write reports so that they are contributing to the community can be really great and a really fun way to use tech at the end of your hike that you might be doing. All right, I'm gonna head on back to our presentation, just a little bit about all trails. Okay, so next up, uh, this is, we already talked a little bit about Washington Trails Association or your local trail finding. It works the same there. So we have the Michigan Trail Finders somebody shared, find those. Again, partner with them in some way, right? Like think if you can partner, if you are a state park in Washington, how might you be able to connect with them um, and make sure your trail reports, maybe you use them as well to find when there's maintenance needs, things like that. But they can be a really great way for you to recommend families as an after um, activity to do and say, don't forget to check out WTA.org, write a report, help everybody know how it was today. Again, building that community of, of hikers. Ooh, cross Florida Greenway. Thanks, Bree. All right. Um, somebody mentioned Google search um, for images, but one thing in the kind of planning phase I like to do is using Google Maps Street View. So not all, all of your trails have it, but um, when you go to Google Maps, you can, um, and again, this can be for something as a pre-adventure that you all do if you're at your organization. But if I go to maps and then I 
drop in my little peg man or peg person. Let's see, so I'm gonna go to maybe, uh, maybe I'll go to that split rock that was in Paradise Point. <laughs> Don't know if we'll, oh, that's Timberline Trail. All right, so maybe again, and you could put this into the hands of your kids too during this plan phase. So you say, um, hey, why about you put in where we wanna go, you get directions, you search food along the way for a snack afterwards. Again, it's gonna take longer, but it's worth it, right? Maybe you don't do it every time, but um, think about that. So you can always check and see, I bet you the one over by Timberline Lodge probably has, um, but if you drop your Pegman in, think here, but it'll highlight blue if there is, um, you know, some of your bigger parks like Yosemite, obviously, I think there's a lot, but even having, you know, kids come through and be like, whoa, this, this is what the terrain's going to be like. More and more, there's been, you know, Google going with their hiking backpack and taking the 360 images or public given um, 360 images. You, if you have the Google Street View app, you can, it's just free on iOS or Kids can stitch together their own 360 um, without having to need a 360 camera. Um, and then they can upload it to this. Again, it's that community feeling of saying, whoa, um, we just you know, saw this cool canyon in Escalante. Um, I want to you know, take a 360 of it. And then you can upload it here for other people to, you suddenly get a more immersive experience of what it might be like at Timberline um, versus just um, you know, looking at a 2D photo. Uh, so again, uh, you can have kids search for that street view before they go, um, but you can also street view the road leading up to it, right? So as your adventure starts to grow, you might be taking them on, you know, more forest roads, you know, the more comfortable families get with adventure, the more they might do that, where street view might help with them to think, you know, what does it look like when I come up to the parking lot? What's it gonna be like? So this can help, especially for newer adventuring families. This just gives some peace of mind to understanding the landscape if they're going on um, a bigger adventure. Okay, cool, let's keep cruising. And it also checks the fears too, if they wanna see like, do I wanna go on something like this? What's the, you know, for families, is there gonna be a pretty steep drop off? Am I okay with that? So searching for that can be helpful. All right, if there's any questions around planning, all trails, Google Maps, Street View, um, writing trip reports, reading trip reports too. Didn't mention too much on that, but you know, again, putting that power in your kid's hand and say, hey, can you go research for me the last week on that trail? Does it, you know, is the snow melting yet? Do we need to bring, um, our snowshoes, right? Like, again, put that onto them so you're not, often parents are wearing the burden of adventure um, and kids are more than willing to help you out with that. They just need a little bit of a, a nudge in the right direction. Google Pin Man would be great for OHV trails, Jim. Totally, for looking at grades. Plus folks who can't do the trail, they can take a virtual tour. Absolutely, um, so if you are, Jim, a, um, somebody who's a trails manager, you might wanna just search the Google map of your I often, because I'm um, doing these a lot, I realize the trailhead isn't correct on Google Maps. Google Maps actually lets you edit it um, and it gets vetted. Like, so I just edited the trailhead of somewhere out in New England because it was way off. Um, and then it, about a week later, they just emailed and say, yay, the Google Maps team edited this for you. So consider that, especially with like things like OHV, OHV trails or things that could really get you know um, families lost when they are trying to adventure consider doing a vetting uh, excursion on Google Maps yourself and see if anything needs to be edited or added or drop that peg man and be like, there's no 360 images here. I wonder if that would be helpful to families if you know maybe our next naturalist trip out, we take a 360 and we put it in the map to help it come alive for some folks. Thanks, Jim, for sharing that. Uh, Beverly wanted to know, is there any school nature trail managers out there? Experiences using tech to help kids develop their own field guide to their nature trail. I love that, Beverly. So, um, you know, they're the owners of um, their own trail guide. Absolutely. I know here in Portland, the um, Children's Museum, I'll, I'll send it in our resources to you, Beverly, but they have their own trail system right up in Washington Park, and they developed um, a really nice printed trail guide of the top 
plants that they saw. They got they researched it all. They took their own. The kids took the photos. Um, I'll send you the contact to there because um, I really liked their program and they just printed it out. And now anyone who goes to the Portland Children's Museum, they can get this free printout that the kids made. So that could be something that um, trail managers you could do is, you know, maybe maybe that's a project that they submit. I love it, Beverly. Great ideas. All right. Oh, awesome. Welcome, Linda from Florida Space Coast. How can you get Google Maps to edit the boundary of the mess refuge? Oh, my goodness. Yes, you can do boundaries let me follow up with you on that leo i 100 percent will um i work with google for education and their maps team so i'm not sure how you edit boundaries i know you can edit trailheads you can edit um you know buildings things like that i'll look into that for you but that is frustrating especially things change a lot too thanks laura for resources from tennessee state parks yay these are really really great i can't wait to share this okay do we're going to spend the last chunk of our oh my goodness our chunk of time is going fast Okay, again, remember you are the lead adventurers, everybody. This is a quote from Ken Deniston at Hoyt Arboretum here in Portland. Be curious like kids already are. So learn things yourself, share with kids. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. Encourage all those questioning techniques. Um, we talked a little bit about iNaturalist. I'm gonna show you real quick, and just in case you haven't seen it yet, but I'm gonna show you Seek, which I like a little bit more for kids. So if you can see on my screen, it's just Seek by iNaturalist. And it, I like it. Somebody mentioned an app, um, I think Avenza that is like Pokemon Go. But um, if you just take the picture here, and it's augmented, a nice little augmented reality, um, but you can see, let me see if it'll get my orchid for you, okay. Let's see if I can see it. Oh, there we go. And it's got orchids. And it'll tell you on the top how close you are to getting at it. Um, and then you take the picture when you're done. And I love it because then um, I save all of them. So now I've got kind of these achievements. All of these are super motivating to kiddos. And it's a great training wheels to something a little more complex like leaf snap or um, just the full iNaturalist. Um, so I think it's a great gateway. Um, and again, it's having that in the pocket. If you're leading the trail for everybody, maybe you pull this out once or twice, right? You don't want to have the whole hike, people doing every single plant, but maybe maybe you do. Maybe you have kids who are really into that. Um, but encouraging, my, you know, maybe you take out the map. And sometimes when I do lead the hike with kids, I mark on the map and I say, all right, cool. We, this is very cool. We get to use our phones on this hike, fun. But here's the two points that we're going to pull it out. I want to pull it out here at the viewpoint. And then here, there's a really great meadow with a lot of wildflowers. But the rest of the time, let's use our eyes and be present in the moment. So having those kind of cues can help you um, when you are trying to um, be a little bit more um, balanced in your approach. Geocaching, somebody mentioned that they do it. Let us know if you have geocached or if you even have geocaches on your property. Um, of course, you have to get permission, obviously, I think from state national parks, and I don't think you can on national parks, but I got permission for Beacon Rock State Park in Washington to place one, and I got permission from Pacific Crest Trail. So you could think about this of even just researching which ones are near your trails. And again, as folks come into your visitor center, or if you are leading a naturalist hike, maybe you, um, you, maybe you hide your own. It can be super fun to just, um, in case you haven't seen it, here it is on my phone, and you know, it could be fun if you're leading the hike yourself, if you make a really tiny one, like a micro cache, um, and then you log it, and then you know exactly where it is, right? It's kind of fun, because you can monitor it at the park yourself, or maybe it's outside of the park, um, you know, on different lands, but it can be fun to have a national park themed one or a refuge themed one that they can come um, and grab. Um, and then of course you, I think the biggest piece of this for kids is orienteering, understanding how to follow a map. But again, also that piece of um, engagement, right? If they know I need to look for this, especially on a longer hike and be like, ooh, it's three miles in, can we make it? Let's check the map. This can be a really great tool to integrate into that. And for them for planning, they can download it before, um, you know, they can look before, they can plan it. Again, that ownership in their hands where they say, I'm gonna lead us to this, um, you know, and it also brings up a piece of failure that I like. You know, our kids often are so 
um, taken care of nowadays that, you know, um, failure, you know, not making it to a summit, turning around, um, you know, skin knee happening, um, you know, you don't find your geocache, it rains on us. These are all super great character building points um, to build that kind of grit in our kids. So I love geocaching because we know that we're not always going to find one. Um, cool. I think somebody already mentioned uh, Merlin bird ID. Um, so again, as a naturalist, thinking where you could put that in your trail that you're leading. Um, maybe you know a great spot and you pass around the phone with everybody, or if it's a family hike, you ask them. Right, this can be harder to do on a, a naturalist-led hike for them because they have to sit there and download it. If you are going to do that, maybe you come and you meet and it's going to be kind of a more tech-focused naturalist hike and you say, all right, for the next 10 minutes, everybody download these two apps if you can. If you don't, maybe you have a couple, you know, maybe you can loan your phone to the family that doesn't for equity. Um, but also just using the recorder. So even if you don't have the app, every phone has a recorder on it. So anytime, even if it's a bird or if they hear something rustling, I encourage kids to just press record. And then we get home and we listen to it. Then we can go to Cornell's website or we can um, use that audio even for creating. Sometimes we'll make a video about our trip and uh, we overlay on iMovie that tweet tweet that we like. And so the really fun way is to start to create kids. Bringing in the math, um, right? So not only using all trails, but tracking how long it went and letting them follow the dot. This can be so, so easy to do um, with maybe you assign a role to somebody on the hike and say, you are our, um, you are our map master. Um, and then we just want you to check every couple, you know, maybe every 10 minutes, make sure our dot is following, right? It's on your easy trails for kids. It doesn't make a big difference, but again, you're building in that acumen for them. Um, and then playing with math, right? So a lot of you are teaching, have your kids teaching from home right now. Um, you know, maybe instead of doing the math lesson today, we go outside and we estimate and we look at angles, right? There's so many ways to just naturally play with numbers when you hike, looking at elevation, understanding what that means um, in real time and authentically, for sure. Peak visor, somebody mentioned as well. Um, this is really great. Again, just have it in your pocket hand this to somebody on your hike and immediately watch their eyes light up. So if you can see here, you can see out towards Mount Hood here in Portland, um, and you can take a screenshot. And then later, you can do things like I do with kids. When we get home, we look at our pictures we took, um, and then we put it into a nature journal to say, ooh, we saw that peak today. This is how much it was. All right, I'm almost done, guys. I'll breeze through a couple of these last ones. Um, Agents of Discovery. Um, let us know in the chat so I can share with others if your park has one already. It's super wonderful. I love it. Um, and I, uh, you know, again, letting them, letting your kids um, download it and letting them lead the way. And then maybe you, you even um, have a hike where you teach parents how to use agents of discovery. And again, not just teach parents how to use it, but teach the kids how to lead the way. That's the key part here. Somebody mentioned Starwalk as well. Um, so I won't go into that. I wanted to spend the last one minute on creators, right? And so I'm um, thinking of not only letting your kids take photos that are interesting, right? Like, so teaching them the very basics of digital photography, whether it's taking a picture of a plant, um, whether it's framing, um, you know, a great Joshua tree with the lighting, um, but, but let them be creative, right? Right now, our kids are creating Instagram Lives, TikTok videos um, on random subjects. Um, and we're seeing teachers get really creative with perhaps, you know, maybe on your hike, you let one person take small snippets um, of videos. And then maybe at the end, as part of the recap, you can put pick a fun song on TikTok that um, exemplifies how you felt, right? Like, oh, it was really hot. And then you search on TikTok and it's like, oh, here's all these songs that are about hot. Um, and then you can put that video together. Maybe you even post that on your, um, on your pages. So you can see this is a kid created extension and you can even do it scientifically, right? Like, so it doesn't just have to be fluff, fluff and fun. Um, there's actually on TikTok a ton of, if you just look on hashtag nature, same with Instagram. The, the features in it are super nice for editing, right? So there's just really fun ways that you can do overlays. Bella. 
I helped her by removing the invasive isopod parasites so that she would be able to carry eggs and make shrimpy babies. She had a male and female parasite. I gave Bella some pets to make her feel better, fed the parasite to a hungry sea chicken named Franklin, set Bella free, and be sure to follow. So these are just fun ways that, again, you can lead it as the leader. It's on your account. But um, there's so many creative ways for kids to tell a story about some of the species they're seeing or the land. All right, folks, I have come to the hour. I wanted to make sure, one, that you, um, my last bit was just making sure you have balance. So having things like a paper nature journal, having things like a paper scavenger hunt, um, those are all important. But as you seek out to dream, plan, and do with technology on your sites, um, if you fill out the evaluation, we'll be giving away um, a bunch of our books to, we, we'll mail them to you. Um, and then I'll also send everybody a follow-up with links and all of your really wonderful uh, examples in the chat. Um, I'll stick around and I know we went to the hour, but I, I'll stick around and answer any questions, Candace. Sorry about the technical difficulty, but I had a really fun time showing you some of these tools that I'm passionate about and the philosophy of um, having student and children led um, adventures. Oh gosh, no! That, thank you so much, Wendy. You were you were excellent. We had everyone was seemed totally fine. <laughs> I think we're all used to technical difficulties nowadays, so um, we're just so excited to have everyone. Um, a majority of of everyone staying on still. So I'll ask a couple questions, and then I think we'll have to end. But. Um, Jim had mentioned, um, we have quite a few Jims on the phone, so I did not get the last name, but um, he'd love to see uh, 50 hikes with kids in Michigan. Just kind of wondering, you know, are there going to be other books in other parts of the, of the country coming out, or what's the plan? Yeah, you know, there is really wonder there's a wonderful series called Best Hikes with Kids. I'm not sure if they're in Michigan as well. Um, but that's been a really great resource for us. Um, it, but yeah, we're move, it's, I work with Timber Press and they make the beautiful, gorgeous field guides. And our goal was to make um, something like a field guide for kiddos. So stay tuned. I know Michigan has some beautiful land. We're kind of making our way down. We have New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania next. So I also saw a question from Sarah come in. How do you balance with group hikes with their parents when they want to get a lot of photos of the kid with hiking? Right. Sometimes parents might be, Sarah, your worst enemy. <laughs> so you might want to say, again, you know, technology doesn't just have to be selfies the whole time. And so maybe you say we're going to do a tech friendly hike today. But again, kind of that map and saying maybe you even have an aside for parents and be like, parents, we're going to do one selfie because we got to move along. But, um, you know, choose your one spot in the map that you want to take your selfie today. Um, and hopefully this gives parents that love using, you know, love taking pictures, love using technology, gives them some other ideas so that they're not, you know, just stopping and, you know, having it all be about them and the family, but looking externally about understanding the land. Great question, Sarah. Ooh, Great, photos? and uh, Susan, what and age are the books targeted for? Oh, yeah, so they're targeted anywhere from, you know, if it's just a parent who has uh, a baby and they want to take them out in their carrier because they're, you know, kid-friendly elevation, all the way up until, you know, I've got um, 13 and 14-year-olds that still like using it because there are some challenging ones that are, um, you know, the kind of a thousand foot elevation, some summits, and they like still reading the maps and everything. And then even high schoolers can, I like to tell them to lead their younger siblings on it. But high schoolers should be hopefully getting into the point where they maybe want to get their own adult guidebook, but maybe not. There's a lot of high schoolers who haven't ever hiked before. I think you all know this too, that it's shocking, but you know, you might take a 17 year old who has never hiked before. In that case, something like this that is simple, that is, you know, really clear cut and kind of bright and attractive for kids. I would say that 17 year old would still enjoy reading this for sure. Oh, great. Um, Zachary um, asks, do you have any stats on what families are looking for on hikes, you know, in regards to length or time or other things? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is um, they they want to be able to turn around. I think terrain is important, especially for newer and younger families. Like I would say three, four, five-year-olds, that's the number one thing they want to know. Is it rocky? Is it rooty? Um, they want to know that. Um, so that can be helpful for you as you, if you are telling families when they come into the visitor center, you know, telling them the actual terrain, what that looks like. Those youngers are also really concerned about drop-offs, even if they don't look really big to you. 
um, you know, just imagine in your mind like a six-year-old, you know, going ahead um, and then, you know, having a little bit of a steep drop off. So I think those are kind of the two things. Length, I think too, they, I think parents often are quite ambitious, you know, with a six or seven miler that's out of, if somebody doesn't hike a lot, that's quite out of the, it's going to not be a great time. So I try to gauge into a conversation with families when they come in and ask them about the last hike they went on. You know, if they're regularly doing three miles or so, they could be ready for a five, you know, um, five or a six mile. But um, again, they're going to want to have lots of stops, lots of power up points, snacks, um, you know, and that's why highlighting those things on a trail for them, like I, we put things on the map that aren't typically on the map, like weird tree, right? Like, or tree caves, um, you know, and, and those little things to say, like, those are definitely points to stop, play, right? Because a lot of times your seven-year-olds don't want to keep trucking on. Like they stop and they see mushrooms and like they want to play there for 30 minutes. So that's, I think parents feeling okay with like turning around at that point and they're not going to make it to the mine at the end, but, but that's okay. I think that's another kind of data point that I see is that, you know, if they choose a longer one, make sure there's something along the way that they can have as a, as a milestone. Are we having fun yet? Oh, thank you, Dan. That's a really great resource. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I think um, that's a really good note to end on. Um, really appreciate your time, Wendy. So informative, um, really interactive. This was an excellent webinar. So thank you so much to you, everyone for attending. And um, thank you so much again for joining us for this installment of the California Trails and Greenways webinar series. Be sure to check out our website for the rest of their webinars. This is just the beginning, all of which are free to the public thanks to their generous supporters. And we hope you'll be able to join us for future webinars offered in our Advancing Trails webinar series. I noted uh, immediate upcoming webinars on this slide, but if you miss any of our live webinars, um, they are available as recordings to download at any time in our online store. So thank you again, everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and happy trails. Thanks, Candace. Thank you, everyone. Looking forward to sending this chat to everybody.